Of 17,000 men employed, 13,000 work underground. Let us join them on the air as the miners are lowered smoothly and safely to a depth equivalent to a 100-story building. Besides the miners who blast the coal, there are laborers, train crews, track men, carpenters, timbermen, electricians, pump men, bosses, and hundreds of others. At a breast or chamber, a mining machine cuts a slot seven feet deep under the coal so that dynamite placed near the top of the vein may exercise its maximum force. Where conditions prohibit the use of mining machines, hand methods are employed. The miner then drills a number of holes seven feet deep. In each, with the aid of a wooden rod, he places several sticks of dynamite. The last stick in each hole contains an electric blasting cap, the wires of which he connects with each other and with a plunger magneto battery. An appalling stillness intensifies the suspense. He fires and tons of coal burst nature's shackles of millions of years, eager to do man's bidding in home and industry. The coal is then loaded into mine cars, which, after being made up into long trains, speed en route to the shaft over a network of tracks, part of a vast underground railroad system. At their underground terminal, the loaded cars gravitate cautiously to the shaft. As the elevator reaches the bottom, one of the cars is placed on board. At a signal from the footman, the car rises with increasing speed to the surface, where we pick it up and follow it to the top of the tower or head frame, where it tips forward, discharging the coal into the foothouse. The preparation of coal begins with separating the large lumps from the mine run. This permits a closer and more careful inspection. The smaller coal passes through the screen, the larger lumps traveling over and onto moving picking tables at which men are stationed to remove material of a doubtful nature. Another step in providing the best quality. Leaving the tables, the large lumps are broken to smaller sizes by revolving steel points. The coal, which passed through the screens, as well as that broken in the rolls, join in a gigantic conveyor line, which lifts it to the top of the breaker. Thus, it passes from the foothouse, where it has received preliminary sizing and cleaning. From the top of the conveyor, the coal gravitates to a screen with smaller holes than the previous shakers. Generous sprays of water accompany every step of preparation. The shaker is not crowded with coal. This ensures perfect sizing. The larger coal passes over and into a smaller roll, where it is further reduced in size. Having been carefully screened, each size of coal enters its particular cleaner or cleaners for the final removal of impurities. In this modern jig, coal is floated off by means of pulsating water, superinduced by a reciprocating plunger. The newest up-to-the-minute development is the Menzi cone. Entering the cone, the coal is spread by revolving arms. Here it meets strong upward currents of water, which are maintained at constant pressure. No sand or other material is introduced to contaminate the coal. A continuous flow of 8,200 gallons per minute, equivalent to 25 tons of water per ton of coal, floats the pure coal toward the discharge end, where it merrily cascades toward and over the dewatering shaker screens. Now, well sized and well cleaned, it is carefully conveyed to a storage bin or railroad car loading pocket. Here it rests momentarily before embarking on its journey to the consumer. Railroad cars en route to mines frequently pick up debris, which must be first removed before the coal is loaded. The drop into the car is reduced by the swinging loading chute. Again, the coal is washed. This is a simple operation, but it marks the greatest progressive step ever taken by any producer in the interests of its dealers and the coal buying public. The Glen Alden Coal Company has installed modern boxcar loaders. Here, when the car comes to rest, 
it is locked into position by a powerful mechanism. As the coal is loaded through the door, the car is slowly tipped to a steep angle as one end of the box car is loaded. The action of the cradle is thereupon reversed so that the other end of the car may also receive an equal load. Each colliery maintains a modern and well-equipped sampling and testing station. Here, each car of coal is halted long enough to be boarded by experienced inspectors who take samples from many points on the car. Take them not at random, but according to a scientifically determined plan. From this point on, the coal is subjected to careful laboratory tests to check sizing so it will meet the rigid requirements of householders. For this purpose, many of these analyses are conducted in equipment which has been specially designed for the testing of anthracite. The loaded cars then gravitate to the colliery yard where they are made up into trains and moved to one of the large railroad distributing yards. From here, they speed their way north, east, south, and west to the thousands of dealers in as many thousands of communities. The Glen Alden properties are situated in the heart of the richest deposits of Pennsylvania anthracite. Deposits which because of their inherent burning qualities mean more heat for less money. To this has been added the last word in scientific preparation. The result is the largest selling brand of solid fuel in America. Their day's work done, the underground force faces homeward. Here is that wholehearted personality that is born of rugged endeavor, as stalwart in character as rugged in physique. Glen Alden Coal Company provides for bathhouses, in which provision is also made for the safekeeping of street and work clothes, which are changed at the beginning and end of the day. Lighting equipment is returned to the attendant at the close of each day, so that it may be inspected and placed in condition. After stopping en route at the dressing rooms, the miners now find refreshment under the magic of liberal applications of soap and warm water. The close of the day finds our miners returning to their homes, anxious to meet their families. To them must come the satisfaction of having played an important part in bringing health and comfort to the three million homes whose winters become balmy summers through the use of dependable coal.